I am Andy, and here we go. We are about to jump into uh, how to make a record in your home studio. Um, so we're going to do that by having a look at a record at my latest record, which is called This House. Uh, you can get it on iTunes and Amazon and everywhere else. Um, and so 12 songs, basically they're all uh, kind of short, like two minutes, around, around two minutes. And uh, the, the record itself is a bit of a concept record, which is uh, out of the norm for me later. I might have some, we might have some discussions kind of about, uh, you know, inspiration for songs and how to write stuff. And that's a whole other conversation. But uh, so, and, but for now, we're going to talk about the actual production of the record uh, in the home. So right now I'm kind of doing this from uh, my new studio, which we've built here next to the house. Um, this record was made in uh, the home studio. Uh, on it, you will find, uh, we're gonna talk about this song today. Called Act of Congress, but really basic guitar, bass, drums, some keyboards, and some vocals. Nothing too complicated. Um, and so for my production, um, we uh, are using Digital Performer from Mo2. Um, you say, dude, why aren't you using Pro Tools, man? Like, everybody in the world is using Pro Tools. So right, so true. Uh, everybody is using Pro Tools. Um, I've just happened to start up with uh, DP. Uh, it's what my job bought me years ago. And uh, I like it a lot. Um, there's still uh, one or two producers around Nashville that use DP. Um, it's awesome. Um, they keep updating it. Um, it's stable as can be. I never turn it off. I leave projects open for days. Um, meanwhile, all my friends that run Pro Tools seem to always have problems with Pro Tools. So, uh, anyways, it's it's uh, they're all the same. Is the bottom line um, when it comes to a DAW, a DAW, um, you are recording studio in the box, as it were. They all kind of do the same things, whether you're talking about uh, Pro Tools, Digital Digital Performer, Studio One, I mean, even Ableton Live. Um, they're all they're all crossing lines everywhere, and they all they all do the same things. You know, uh, we want to be able to record things. You know, like from a microphone, record some guitars, uh, whatever like that. Uh, it, it past that, you know, uh, it, it's kind of an open an open market. Uh, it's it's totally field day. Um, so what I use in my studio, I am a Slate Everything user. So I have Slate Digital's Everything Bundle, which means uh, pretty much most of my, uh, or all of my, my processing and plugins and stuff like that are going to happen, uh, are happening for this track, this, this album in the box. Um, there's nothing fancy, no crazy outboard gear um, happening. Uh, I can show you what I'm mixing on. Um, this, of course, is a Raven, um, and uh, I believe I was mixing this record on the Raven just in the other uh, home studio. Um, my monitors are Event uh, Studio Precision ASP8s, um, which are really high. It's a, it's a high quality monitor. You can uh, read up on them if you like to. Um, <clears throat> my interface for this record was actually a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Um, which you can see now down here I've got a nice little red 4 pre or a big red 4 pre um, and uh, the 2i2 you know that's what did this record it did just as good as, as most other stuff um, there's also a little mix station here um, I'll have to look and see if I was using the virtual mics yet for this I think I probably was uh, but we'll open one of those tracks up and find out and uh, that's, you know, that's the long and short of what we got going on here. Um, so, like I said, I'm using the, I'm, I'm an everything bundle guy. Um, so, uh, and I really, really like this late suite of plugins. I come from, you know, Waves World uh, and really anything else that you can kind of find, you know how it goes. You know, you try this, you try that. I was really into the uh, SSL plugins, you know, and as... Years progressed, everybody started making cooler modeling plugins and stuff, modeling channel strips and preamps and all this stuff. So uh, naturally, man, I got right into that stuff. And so the Everything Bundle is a great way to have, you know, all this stuff at your fingertips, like without having to be a gear procurement guru, which I'm not. I'd rather spend my time creating stuff and making stuff than like figuring all this stuff out, like being computer tech and managing my iLock subscriptions to all, you know, it just gets like to be such a hassle. 
And with the Slade thing, it's I'm like a sales rep now. It's like everything's just all together. And then they don't stop there. They keep they throw you software synths and guitar amps, like everything you need to like do this. Um, so uh, I've done uh, both routes over the years. You know, I've been doing this a long time. Uh, over the years, and you know, I've got uh, I've gotten to where I just really dig this. The Raven is another conversation altogether. I think I have Raven videos probably on my channel. Um, you want to lose the mouse from your process? <laughs> Greatest thing ever. Bye-bye uh, mouse. Um, we're, we're just using our hands on this. You know, you, gotta, you can't get away from using the mouse a little bit. But So um, what we have here, let's compare this project and this record to like a real record. You know, back in the day, I might have had... A reel-to-reel -reel tape deck sitting over here, and we just start, you know, running tracks, and you start printing tracks and instruments out, and get ready to mix, and off you go. This is not very different. Um, in that world, we'd have consoles, we'd have mics um, going into consoles through preamps, and you know, and then hitting tape. Um, and so, what I'm pulling up here is one of my slate mix racks. This is for the vocal channel. I was curious to see. Um, if we had, uh, if I had the VMS system yet, <clears throat> my little camera, my GoPro camera here is sitting on my VMS mic, makes a good mic stand too, or camera stand, the mic stand makes a good camera stand. So, uh, anyways, uh, what we, what you're looking at is, uh, you know, you've got a, a virtual channel, a strip here, uh, that's the slate virtual channel. And then you've got an SSL, uh, uh, EQ, then you've got the F, the stress, the distressor, uh, and these are models, you know, models of this stuff. And we're running uh, through an SSL, uh, the G, the board, and uh, they're all great, but we'll talk about that a little later. Um, then we've got a trimmer, then we've got uh, an air EQ, which is basically, uh, you know, some way up high, way, 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 way high up. And that's really it. Um, that's a vocal track. Um, but so that warrants a little talk on the uh, virtual channel. Um, and the virtual channel is really super cool. Um, and that's what gives you uh, like a virtual console. It wraps everything together. It's one of the things that, you know, like, whoops, uh, when you talk about like what sets a pro mix apart from, you know, a home mix. Uh, well, if you're running into a little Tascam mixer from your Audio Technica microphone, and uh, you're just going through a, a, a working man's interface, like a Scarlett 2i2 from Folksrite, um, you know, like, you're not you know you don't have a lot to work with um, and so you're not introducing any flavor kind of anywhere you know uh, maybe that setup say versus you know you got a vintage neumann it's coming into like a nice api whatever preamp and uh and then through some nice tube eqs you know before it goes into a tube console or not tube kind of analog console uh, and goes through some channels and some buses and hits that master fader and a master compressor. Um, you know, like, all that stuff adds all this tasty little goodness to your mixes uh, and to your music. And uh, it's really, really, really subtle. And it's really hard, you know, if you're just an amateur, if you're not spending, like, 80 hours a day in front of crazy good speakers, you know, and really hearing all these details. If you just got like average guy stuff going in after work, you want to make a song after you put the kid to bed, you know, and get some creativity scratched out, but you don't want it to sound like crap. You know, you want it to sound good. You got all this computer power at you. Why, why not? That's one of the things that you can do to help your stuff sound a little better. Um, as you think about your whole throughput, your whole process from the start of that instrument until when it lands on the other side um, in whatever mix thing you're doing. Um, on your, you know, you're playing it out of your phone, through all the wireless speakers in your house that are so easy to set up now, you know, your car, like whatever. So, um, I'm going to be talking, of course, entirely about the Slate package um, and, and what I use. Most of this stuff is available, um, you know, through other mediums, um, uh, a couple of them, I'm not going to get into it. Um, but everybody's got the same stuff. The models are awesome. Um, they model the consoles, they model the preamps, they model the microphones, they model uh, the, the, the EQs and compressors. They're just fantastic. And so um, I will say um, this for sure. Uh, the different types of content that you're running through uh, this stuff can have a great effect on uh, 
the what you hear you know how you perceive changing a console if you change from the sslg to e console like you're not hearing a lot you know like it you've you've got to kind of have messed with it and and done a lot of productions and play with it enough to know the difference between you know the g and the e the e's to me has like there's something different in the whole mid you know all, all the mid section like when i'm doing for example uh, the e the uh, SSL E Series EQ is so perfectly awesomely MIDI, you know, like I can't not use it on, on a lot of guitar tracks that are like, you know, fill tracks and stuff. Um, they're just so awesome. Whereas this G console, you think about that, like, I mean, that is a modern rock console for sure. Like that vibe, um, everything that's coming off is not so MIDI. You could, I wouldn't say scooped, um, scooped mids, um, but it's just a different, it's a different tonal curve through the mids, you know, it gives you different stuff. Um, then you've got different, um, the Neve console for sure. I was actually, <clears throat> excuse me, talking about the Neve EQ just now. Um, the two consoles somewhat, yes, but, and yeah, I'm just a dipshit human. What do you want? Um, so, uh, the, the Neve console, yes, has this crazy awesome thing in the mid and I'll always throw that on like a mid game guitar, um, that's filling up and, and filling stuff out cause it just sounds so good. Um, but point being is point still the same. These different consoles over the years have had vast, you know, really different tones and sounds and they're fantastic. Um, the models are fantastic. And so, uh, you got uh, the SS, the two SSLs, the Neve. Um, I use an Omega a lot, which you know, and I don't know about all this stuff. I'm just a, I'm just a guy, but I know that if I sit here and really focus and and do some uh, and ten, do some listening and focus listening and pay attention and change between these things or bypass, you know, you can hit this group bypass button and bypass, you know, that that console altogether and hear the difference. Um, I warn you, like I said, it's very very subtle. In this video coming off like camera mics and stuff you won't hear the differences you know but for me i do i do this if i want to like really hear it. you let your ears adjust you know like you need like a minute or two um you know let let this sit here here's with the console on you know i'll let this sit really get used to it and i'm speeding this up greatly right now See now, I can, I can even hear it. I was doing it a little while ago, just kind of to, you know, like hey, I, I just like to hear the difference a lot. And so uh, a little while ago, I was doing it, and uh, now I just did it real quick, and I can still hear the difference. Um, and the difference, okay, I'm turning on and off the uh, the SSLG console, you know, which is like it's the modern rock console um and definitely the, it gives life to this situation you know there's like and what does that mean that's stupid you're totally right what does give life to so this is um it adds us something there's a something that's coming out that wasn't there before so let me go ahead a little bit in the, in the production here um, one of these things is not like the other it takes an act of congress this is bypassed. And bypassed, it's just thinner. You know, like, there's a, there's something there. This is bypassed. It's both on the top and the bottom. It's like, it's like there's a tiny sock or something that's like sitting over the mix, you know, and, and you've, you've totally just taken it off the top and here comes your top end. It's just like, ah, it's beautiful. Uh, and then on the bottom, it just gets beefier. Um, it's just a tad bit beefier. Um, so that's, um, you know, real quick why, you know, where you, sh the very first starting point, like I've got, boom, a virtual console happening on this mix. And so we know coming out of the gate, it's going to be pretty good. Now, this mix does not have virtual mic system. So that's pretty cool too, because these vocals sound pretty tight. Um, let me go ahead and we'll pop up a little vocal stuff here quick. Um, and as we get into that vocal quick, I'm going to bump clips. So, so the vocals on this track, uh, like I said, no, uh, no virtual mic system at this point in my life. Uh, this is just an audio technica 3035, I think. Um, it's probably in this drawer. It is. 
Um, this is it, and this is... 3035, yes, through this raggedy old, yeah, I think, it's a great mic, dented, I think it was like 250 bucks or something, uh, years ago, and, uh, it's, this whole record, I used that microphone, um, and it's a fantastic mic, you can get some really great sounds out of it, and so, uh, for, let's have a listen. an act of Congress Here's our vocal. to get this thing just to fold like the other. I don't understand. And we've got that vocal, of course, going through the console, um, the SSL EQ, um, and then the distressor, like I said before. Uh, One bit. of these things is not. Trimming it down a little bit, still coming in hot, and a little bit of air on top. And that's all, you know, that's all you to need. To get this we'll thing bypass the just EQ. fold like the other, I don't understand it. Mm. So really, just pulling a little bit off the bottom. Of course, we've got a high pass thing going on. A little bit off the bottom, a little bit back to the top. Um, compressor, the distressor is going to be the most of this, probably what's going to make this sound like it sounds, um, if I could guess. Let's, let's see. One of these things is not like the other. It takes yeah. an act of Congress to get this thing just to fold like Of course you're getting a little volume, um, which can mask things, so you have to be careful what you're listening to, but there's a lot more happening when you add that distressor on there than just volume for sure. Um, and then that high cut there, that high lift on the end, we probably... One of these things is not like the other, it takes an act of cut. It's very subtle and it's in the very high end. Um, and so that's how we're processing the vocal. It's really nothing tricky at all. The, the most important thing you can do with, with vocals and really with tracking everything is get it right the first time, when it, from the start, you know, like every little bit in audio uh, production, you know, like the, the better you start with, the better you end with. Including coffee. You gotta have some caffeine in the morning. Um, anyways, uh, so that's how we uh, do our vocal chain. We'll get rid of that. And so as we can, as you can see in this project, the red is our uh, vocals. Greens are guitars and I don't know, the rest is some MIDI stuff, but We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven vocal tracks. Um, I just split stuff out a lot. Um, and you've probably got a little bit of doubling going on there for some harmony stuff. So we can actually have a look at that. Check out these vocals, even though know, it's kind of a songwriting thing and we're not talking songwriting. One of these things is not like the other. It takes an act of Congress to get this thing just to fold like... Yeah, so we've got uh, those harmony tracks are panned hard left and hard right. It gets a good space up in there. Um, note too, there's not a lot of reverb going on. It's pretty dry. Um, it's a space. It's sitting in a space. Um, the, and then the drums have a little bit bigger reverb, but for the most part, these guys are somewhat dry. Like the other, I don't understand it. And to be frank, I know it's childish. To resist this undermining years of techno lot. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, moving on through it, uh, you want to talk about the guitars a little bit. Um, I am a guitar player, and what's going on with this guitar right here is uh, I've got this Bogner amp over here, driving uh, a cab with two Celestian uh, vintage thirties in it. So that's a Bogner Duende. And the Vintage 30s, and it's mic'd with a 57. And man, let's see, what else do you need? Um, that's pretty much what you got. So, uh, let's run and listen to the- One of these things is not like the- Oh, we've got this. I've got this busing to a group track that is currently uh, not an aux. This is an old project. I just solo it. Sorry. Uh, here's that guitar. And so that takes me right to what I was talking about a little while ago about some of these console differences. Here's that Neve EQ, which has got a great curve in the mid and I've got a big bump in the mid too. A Little bit of dip on the bottom, but not much. And here's that guitar. Turn off the Neve. You can hear. 
like all that mid came back. It's kind of a squashy, muddy. There we go. Perfect. Uh, again, a distressor on there. Um, that's what we do. So, um, that's how that guitar goes. If we want to look at the heavier guitars, too. Go ahead and solo those guys. So uh, again, they're just panned hard left and hard right. There's nothing. There's no rocket science going on there. Um, in my, I should say, in my working setup, you know, I have a track selector over here. All my tracks sit in the middle usually, and then I have a channel strip for whatever's selected. Um, and I find that moving through that a lot works great. Um, you're not supposed to. The Raven's not designed for such minuscule things. It really works better with Pro Tools. The DP implementation's pretty great, but you know, not that great uh, compared to Pro Tools, at least. Um, um, it gets better all the time, um, but it's still awesome. Uh, but anyways, that's uh, what you see me doing here is bumping through stuff like that. And so I can see that guitar left is panned hard left, right's panned hard right. Um, if I wanted to, I could also just pop into the Raven mixer and see that stuff right here as well. Um, anyways, that's guitars. Then we've got a bass. Uh, past that, bass processing is pretty simple. Um, I should uh, maybe unsolo some of these things here and uh, we will have ourselves a little quick look at the old bass guitar, all right. I live in the country and I often speak in a voice that it's like not mine. Uh, here's a bass. Nothing fancy going on here, a little compression, a little EQ, a little bump in that middle too. Again, I must like that EQ uh, back then. This is like a year, year and a half, two years ago. I don't know. That's our this, this, um, Nothing fancy going on there. Uh, drums. Now for this, this whole record doesn't have live drums. My live drums are sitting over there. I don't know if you can see them in these shots. Um, but uh, well, in, a, in another video, I'll, I'll show you about you know how I do the live drums now. Um, I didn't have that option back then, um, so instead of that, what we did or what I did was Easy Drummer is my guy, um, which nope, that's not the track. That's the print track. Easy Drummer, there's my guy. Uh, print track being I usually uh, with a drum stuff like the heavy a heavy processed plug-in. Um, I will uh, usually print it out to a stereo track. Um, maybe we can see Easy Drummer. Uh, we need to get that thing out of the way. And choose the right track. There we go. And uh, that's how I make my drums. I just key them in like that with the keyboard. Doom, doom, so everything that I do play, I play live. Track, track, track. There's no fancy like computer tricks going on here. Um, sometimes I quantize, sometimes I don't. Um, but so that kind of gets us through the project all the way to the point of the accents, which are my, for me um, on this one is the Moog, the Moog Mini V from Arturia, which is great, great, great uh, model of the Moog Mini synth, um, and I love it. Let's see, like, what are we doing here? I don't know if that's supposed to work at all. I'm making people with software look bad, um, and I don't have my keyboard patched in. But the sense, uh, we can play a little bit. Of One of these things is not like the other. It takes an act of Congress. Get this thing done. basic synth sounds. Um, this Artoria synth, this Moog, is not expensive, you know, and again, and so that kind of rounds out the production. You've got Easy Drummer for drums, some Arteria Moog synths, uh, real guitars, real bass, real vocals, um, and really nothing fancy. Overall, sounds great. Hit the stores, looking fantastic. Now on our master bus, we've got the, uh, of course, the master fader and bus compressor. Uh, the virtual mix bus through from part of the console. So this is the very end of the console. Boom, we're hammering down. I should also say we're driving this console a pretty good deal. Um, that's this control right here, which is up like 14 out of 18. 
Um, I like to drive it. I like that, uh, you know, what you're bringing, all that juicy, messy goodness in, of tonality and really it's just like harmonics and weird frequencies and shit. Um, it shows up, uh, you know, in that stuff the more you drive it um, to a point of, of ridiculousness and then you, you got to pull it back. But for this mix, I'm liking it right there. Um, if we go on to our next spot in the plug-in chain, the virtual tape machine, which I love. Um, it adds, again, it's another layer, layer of uh, audio awesomeness. Um, very similar to the, uh, the way the, the virtual console was, turning it on and off, uh, hitting that bypass. You know, you, you have that top come and that bottom. This is more of a strategic hitter. Um, you can change your tape type between uh, uh, 456 and 9, um, slow or fast, kind of, you know, which to me they kind of relate to like uh, detail or, or like clarity, maybe. I don't know, like slower, muddier, faster, clearer. Um, all these things are very subjective, and um, you know, there'll be comments below telling me what a dummy I am. Um, that's fine and cool. Everybody has their own way to do things and how you relate to it and perceive it and then verbalize it. Um, so anyways, with this thing, it's an analog emulator basically, and we're dropping this on the whole mix. We're simulating a uh, two inch two track, um, or a half inch two track, sorry. Um, <clears throat> like mastering tape, basically, like two-track mastering. And so we're dropping it kind of on that two-track mastering tape, which is, you know, killer, and uh, we're driving it a little. Um, you'll see this popping into the red, probably, on that meter. Like oh, yeah, totally. Put some plus two happening up there. Um, so we dial that. In, we get that hitting just right, and I do. If I bypass it, I'll probably be able to tell the difference. No, it's childish to resist this oh, yeah. undermining years of technological breakthroughs in the world of sheep. And you're like, harp, you're some moving crack, dude. That's like totally, I couldn't hear anything. I, I could. Um, there's a, like a sheen. There's a something nice that goes on top of that bad boy. Again, I always related to like pulling a, a sock off of something that I didn't know was on something. Um, anyways, moving through the next to the next slot, we have the uh, FG Gray compressor, which um, I don't remember which one. It's like maybe a SSL bus compressor or something like that. Um, it does the same thing. Um, another very subtle little mm, nice. So I usually ride this. Um, I back off of their straight preset just a little bit. Um, with my threshold and uh, so I don't have it compressing that much just kind of bumping like negative like minus 3 dB or what it yeah minus 3 um, and that seems to do pretty good um, now the only other thing that I don't see on this project that I sometimes do now is I'll add uh, parallel compression um, which in the old days you know that's basically just have another track and another your favorite compressor um, sitting there and you'd compress the whole mix and feed that into the mix, you know, kind of just one more thing feed in there and it like gives it this just, mm, you know, like, mm, yeah, oh, it's oh, uh, just balls, balls coming out of there. Who knows if it would on this mix at all. Um, I'm going to add one just to play around and we will uh, find out. So I did that, I believe, with MU. And I don't know what compressor this is modeling. I don't remember. But it's gnarly. It's got a slammer preset. So we're going to put it on Crush 2. Crush. Pull the mix back. Um, so you could do this one of two ways. I could set an aux track and route uh, a little uh, aux feed from the whole every track in the mix, like all the stuff, through that and then mix that into the mix. Or I could just drop it on the master channel and use the mix knob and mix to taste. So let's play. One of these things is not like the other. It's knocked out totally. The mix is down to zero. I'm gonna put the mix up to like 50%. Understand it. We're bypassed right now. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna let that bypass off and see if I know this. this undermining years of technological breakthroughs in the world of sheets and getting them to stay in place, stay in place underneath me for the night. 
I didn't notice the difference. And yeah, I'm not going to mess with it. But of course, this record's already done. Um, I will say the parallel compression compression thing. Um, it seems to uh, matter the content of the, of the song, like what kind of music is in there, what instruments are in there, how stuff's hitting, how heavy guys are playing. Um, it seems to make a difference to me. Like so I've turned it on before and be like, oh wow, holy cow, it seems like big rock mixes. You know, that's where I'm like, holy cow, that sounds way better. Um, whereas, uh, you know, just your average mix like this or something heavy or crazy, uh, not that big of a deal. Um, I've got a lot of orchestra based tracks too. Um, that I won't use like parallel compression on because I don't know, it just doesn't seem to do much for me. Um, so, uh, in the interest of time and not using all of it that we have today, um, that's a, a, a quick look at you know, uh, this at this song, Act of Congress, uh, and the general process that went into making this record, uh, in my home studio. And I'll put a little picture hopefully up here. You see the old little bedroom studio, but it's just a tiny bedroom. Uh, point being, man, anybody can make records. You can make records in your house. Um, you know, the if you've got something to uh, write about and you want, can make some little bit of music, all the tools are there, and it's not even crazy gangbusters expensive. You know, like regular people can get these tools and make records. So make some records, guys. Peace.